heading out on a 140k gravel ride today. A little bit apprehensive. Start point, we're starting here at Ardveriki Gatehouse. This is up in Loch, near Loch Lagan. Well, Loch Lagan is just, just here to our left. And we're heading out down Loch Lagan past the big Ardveriki house and then up into the hills on a beautiful loop that we've been um, sent by a friend who says it's perfect. So I've just done the first climb up out of our very house, up to Lock and Arms, the little road that goes along these two top locks in our very good state. It's a pretty mixed day, spots of rain at the moment, about probably 10 degrees, <laughs> Scottish summer. Um, but it's okay, we've got it, we're gonna have a headwind along here, but that's, that's pretty normal. Hopefully we'll get the prevailing tailwind when we're coming back in. We've been out about 45 minutes. We're up at Loch and Arbs above Ardveriki House. It's really peaceful and quiet up here. It's been a bit of a headwind along that section. Came down the side of the loch there all the way along. And now we're dropping down into the unknown. I mean, this is what gravel riding is all about. It gets you out places that other well, road bikes can't take you. And you cover so much ground, you so much. It's fabulous. That's us just coming up to a Karawa station. Gives me some walkers. I think a train's just stopped in. So they're all off walking for the day. It's a bit of an iconic place this. Uh, it's part of the one of the scenes in train spotting many moons ago. So if you've seen that film you'll know the reference. What are we gonna do now? Go for a bike. Where? There. That's us just leaving Karawa Station after a really nice little break of tea coffee. Heading over now to Rannoch Moor and then down into the shores of Loch Rannoch. So this route's got four big locks on it, four main locks. Lagan, Sayan, Rannoch and Eric. And uh, we've sort of done the shorelines of two of them and we're heading off across to Rannoch now. So beautiful up here, so remote and just amazing gravel riding. One of the things I love about gravel riding is how you can cover so much ground but you can get yourself into areas that are so remote and in Scotland there's still real wilderness and I mean a lot of today we've been up in the hills, remote areas, no telephone coverage, nobody else around, we've seen the odd bike 
few hikers around Karawa Station. But really, it's been just us. So we just had lunch on the shores of Loch Rannoch. It's our third big loch. Heading now, we've got about 4k before we turn off this nice quiet tarmac road back onto the gravel and head up over into Loch Ert and Darwinie. Yeah, we've been riding maybe five hours, got two and a half, three hours to go. That last bit over some really boggy, but a mile, un especially trail, if that. Wasting time getting on, getting off, getting on, get off. All the little streams and bogs. Yeah. Maybe 500 meters and then we're, oh, okay. we're not on it. I've just had a look on the map. Yeah. And we've come up from the highest railway in the UK. And we're now going to head towards the highest brewery, distillery, which is Dalwini. Just come back down onto the cycle path alongside the A9 and I'm quite glad to hit some very smooth gravel now because the section that we just did along the shores of Loch Garry was pretty gnarly, um, pretty bumpy. It's a bit of a shame, it's the only section on the route so far that's been quite um, uncomfortable to ride and a little bit technical. Um, one more big climb up into Inverpatic and then down into my Veracruz estate and back to the store. Oh, beautiful. About to turn off the shores of Loch, Loch Eric now. It's our last big loch on this route. Kind of feeling it in the legs a bit even though that was nice flat smooth gravel so we've got one more ascent over into paddock and then lagging so the legs hold out That's it, back at the start. Pretty much bang on seven hours ride time. We've been out a lot longer than that, but there were quite a few stops along the way. Uh, overall, amazing. Uh, what a day. I mean, just a beautiful experience. A couple of really tough sections, but I think that's the price you've got to pay to get into these really wild remote areas. I mean, they're just not well trodden. So apart from gravel bikes and hikers and mountain bikes, there's nobody else gets up there, so it's beautiful because there's no one else there, <laughs> but you've got to work for it. Mm -hmm. 